नहीं Hi everyone, can you hear me now? Amazing, I'm so sorry. I was trying to get on board and I was having a little bit of technical issues. Okay, so we have a little bit of sound check and visual check. So if you can see my amazing face and you can hear my voice, please just let me know in the comments. You can say yes, I can see or whatever so that I know that you can see me. Great. Okay, you can hear me, you can see me. That's great. Is there any echo? Any echoes? No. Okay. okay. So I'll just give a little bit of ground rules and then we will just start because I know that a lot of you have a lot of things to do and I don't want to waste so much time. So, um, so a little bit of ground rules. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for joining us here. Um, I know you have so many amazing things important things you could have been doing, but you're here, and I'm going to make sure that you get value for being here. So my voice is faint. Amazing. Okay, let me see. Just give me one minute to see if I can increase the volume. Is it better now? Um, okay, so a few ground rules. So. Today, we're going to be talking about a very important topic, um, and I'm going to give a presentation, maybe for 30 minutes or so, and during that time, I want us to pay attention. Don't put any hate comments in the comment box. It's not necessary. And then when we're done, then we're going to take your questions. Now, I urge you to listen carefully because you might have some questions that will be answered during the presentation. Um, and then if you're asking questions that's already answered during the presentation, then you're just wasting your time and a lot of us time. So get some piece of paper, make sure you're taking notes, and then when we're done, we'll come back and, and uh, answer your questions. So if you can't hear me or you're having any technical issues, just let us know in the comments. But um, from what I can hear, everyone can hear clearly. There's actually no issues with audio or video or whatever. So let me go ahead, share my screen, go to the presentation, and then I'm going to come back. So if you got all that before I move on, just say yes or something in the comments for me to know that you, you got all that and that we're all on the same page. I'm just waiting for your comments so that I can move forward knowing that we're all on the same page. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. And then I would come back after that. Just give me one second to set this up. Okay, there we are. One second.
Okay, great. So um, thank you everyone for joining us today once more. Uh, my name is Shea Yobasi, and as you can see on the screen, I have several or well, three faces of Shea Yobasi so that you can see what I look like. Uh, my name is Shea Yobasi. I used to live in Lagos, Nigeria. I currently live in Ontario, South London, Ontario in Canada. Um, and I teach people how to relocate to Canada, not just from Nigeria, from any other country, African country, European country, wherever. So that's what I do. Now, in our short amount of time that we're going to be spending today, I'm going to be brutally honest um, because I want to bring some confidence to you regarding getting jobs in Canada. I want to throw light on a lot of gray areas also regarding getting jobs in Canada, and I want to expose some truths, lies, and myths concerning getting a sponsored job in Canada. Like I said before, I'm going to be brutally honest. But even more importantly, I want to ensure that you know the next steps to take immediately. Immediately after you go through this webinar, you know the next steps to take, especially if you're looking for a job in Canada and you want to use that to relocate to Canada. However, I want you to take action. Now, implementation is key. I don't want to waste my time or your time. And I don't want to see you months from today still clinging hopelessly to this same problem that I'm about to address today. So do we have a deal? Implementation is key. If you learn something here, you have to go out and do it. So if we have a deal, please go ahead and say yes and tell me that we have a deal so that we can go ahead. Because I need this to be valuable to you and to me. So do we have a deal? Yes, 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 yes. So we have a deal, so I'm going to go on. So today we're going to be talking about, can I get a sponsored job in Canada? And we're going to be looking at the truth, the lies, and the myths. And I have to give a disclaimer, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to read this. The information that I'm providing here is of a general nature. It's for education and information purposes. So this does not replace professional advice and there's no guarantee outcomes. This is for education and information purposes. So let's dive in. So I want to start by telling you the stories of two people. The first story is actually mine. So that is me. Um, so about seven, eight years ago, um, I was frustrated. I was living in Lagos, Nigeria. I was frustrated because my Japa plans were not working here. Yeah? I wanted to Japa out of Nigeria, but for everything I was doing, it wasn't working. Now, I was in the express entry pool for Canada, and in order to boost, boost my CRS course, I knew that I needed a job in Canada. So I started searching desperately for a job, sending my resume and my CV like a possessed demon. I was sending, I was getting no results. And then one day I saw an advert that looked like this. This advert, some of you may have seen adverts that look like this. Multiple job offers for Canada, Spain, four years temporary work permit. Now the sweetest part is accommodation provided, ticket and visa provided for free, <laughs> medical provided transportation. I was going to be earning $7,000 dollars a month. Do you know how much that is? And then there were other benefits, my family status, group benefit, other fringe benefits. This was amazing. So I was excited. This is what I'm looking for. It's not just a job. It's a job with all these benefits. Immediately I connected with the person who posted the ad. I think it was on Facebook. He was an amazing young man. And we started talking. He was very convincing. And he reiterated the promises in the advert and telling me that I was going to get all of those things and that I would pay back, you know, any money they spent for me, I'll pay back when I started working in Canada. Eh? And I was sold. This was just too good to be true, but I believed it because I wanted to believe it. So I paid the first installment to him, then I paid the second installment to him. And then we started talking. So I started asking questions. But the more I spoke with him, the more questions I had, and the more he didn't have any answers for me. It was more focused on me sending him money, but the results that he has promised me was not forthcoming. After making two or three payments, I was done. 
I said, now, Juju, we will carry me the pay more. It was a Canada job scam. I had been scammed. And when I started questioning him more, he blocked me. <laughs> he blocked me, and I couldn't even connect with him again. My eyes cleared, and I learned a big lesson that day, that nothing is free, even in free time. Now, I'm going to tell you the second story. The second story is someone that I've known for a bit, um, and this person wanted to come to Canada, but he felt that my own methods were too slow. He wanted sharp, sharp, somebody to run it for him, and he wanted to get a job in Canada. I told him all the things to do, but he didn't want that, he didn't want that method. So it, one day he came and he said, a cousin of a friend's sister had helped somebody to get a job in Canada and the person was in Canada. And now that person had contacted him and connected him with that company that helped that other person to get a job in Canada. And he asked me if he could go ahead. I stated all my, uh, all my skepticism. I said, well, I don't want to stop you in case it's real, but you know, if you can give up this 300,000 deposit that they're asking you for and you won't feel it, go ahead. And you can see on the left, he sent me this, this chat. He said, can you please help me check out the recruitment agency? We are more than 40 for the interview and the orientation. Uh, and this is the email they sent to him. This is the message they sent to him. Of course, the account number, the account name, they told him to make a deposit of 300,000 for to show his past commitments, uh, send a proof of payment, and then they will send him all of these documents. And they say, once you make payment, we'll start processing immediately. We'll start with your document documentation. And then visa will take 20 to 25 days. And then you will be able to come to Canada. I was like, hmm, I know how this work permit thing works. This thing is looking like a scam. But he was, he was insisting that this person had helped someone. I said, well, the person, the person helped. Did you talk to the person? I said, well, if you can lose that 300,000, go ahead. He said, it will work, it will work. I said, okay, go ahead. And as you can see, this was in September 2022. So in November, I asked him again, I said, okay, how are you doing? Fine. And I asked him, how far with that job? Then he said, he's in training. Um, he has paid the 300,000. They have one more weekend to go. And I said, what next? He said, contract signing and visa slash flight ticket issue. And I said, no, it's good. It's going well. Um... By a couple of, of weeks, I asked him again, how far? If you can look at the image on the right, he said, no one is telling us anything. Um, I said, I saw do. remember my skepticism. I said, what about the person that introduced you? They are not talking. He said that the person is not talking, but it's not going to give up. Remember that this thing started in September and they told him that 20 to 25 days, they would give um they will give the visa. Now this is February 26, 2023. <laughs> I class more and I said, how far with that job thing? And he said, my dear, very sad story. Same old story. Um, and then I said, what story? He said, they said we should wait at immigration change some processes. I said, hmm, no details. He said, no details. I said, what about the lady who connected you? He said, I was asking that lady that introduced me, and she fled up and told me that if I could not wait then I could go to Blazers. Um, now, similar stories happen almost every day now. He has lost 300,000 that I'm aware of. I don't know if he had paid them other monies. He didn't tell me. <laughs> and then I too lost money. Now, if I, if I ask now, some of you can tell me similar sad stories. Some of you can tell me stories that are even worse than these two that I've told you. Someone you know, or even you yourself have been a victim of a sponsored job ad or a job scam, and it's not just in Canada, even the UK or other countries, these job scams abound and people are falling for these scams every day. Now, when I was preparing for this webinar, someone sent me this, this chat and I just put it here. He said, I've tried study and work routes to the UK in the past, even got scammed of precious amounts that almost got me frustrated of the whole process. I've been able to rise up the dust, mainly because of your nuggets and assurances of the possibilities. I even put myself in a saving program. So I get this sort of, this sort of messages every day of people who have been scammed. Huge, I'm telling you, amounts running into many. Some of them have even lost their passports in the process. Now, someone was asking this uh, online. The person said, I got an unskilled sponsorship job in Canada and I was told to pay 12,000 Canadian dollars. Can you see that amount? 12,000. After I arrive and start working in Canada in three to four months, is this legit or scam? And this person responded and said, it is a scam. <laughs> you have been told a lie. Pay and you get nothing. There's no way you can get that kind of visa and blah, 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 blah. 
And the person says, yes, there are fake work permits. There are actually fake work permits. There are fake job ads. They look quite convincing to all, except the officer at the airport. And this person says, I have a few samples to show. They are usually Photoshopped, modified versions of similar looking documents. So these are two stories of people who have actually, I inclusive, gone through or been victims of Canada job scams, and there are so many people. So it breaks my heart, it does, to actually see so many people being scammed of their hard-earned funds. Um, some people use their children's school fees, some people use their house rent, some people even sell off everything because they have been assured that they will actually get jobs in Canada, and because that is what they want, they are not clearly they go ahead and raise these funds. The truth is that there are so many scams. There are so many fake jobs. People are not sure how to differentiate between fake and real jobs. Now, this thing called sponsored jobs that offer juicy promises, all expenses paid for family, an opportunity to pay back in Canada, a lot of time they are Fake. I mean, I mean, I, I'm sad to say because a lot of people don't want to believe. You want to believe it's real, but a lot of times they are fake. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of detail as we go. So now the question you'll be asking is: Are there really sponsored jobs in Canada? Because now it's looking like I'm saying that there are no sponsored jobs. Now, sponsorship. When you hear that word sponsorship, is different for different countries. And Thing I'm going to be talking about today is about Canada. Sponsorship in the US is different from sponsorship in Canada, it's different from sponsorship in the UK. And a lot of times when you have sponsorship in Canada, it has to do with somebody sponsoring their relative, like a husband sponsoring a, a spouse to come to Canada, or a child sponsoring a parent, or sponsoring a grandparent to come to Canada. That's sponsorship when it comes to visa, but we're looking at sponsorship when it comes to employment. Now, what really is a sponsored job? Employment sponsorship is when an employer sponsors, in quotes, or provides some legal or financial backing to enable an individual to obtain a work permit. Now, this is so important. I want to stress this one. The financial backing that employers provide to sponsor foreign employees is usually assistance with getting an LMIA. The employer covers the cost of the LMIA and ensures that you have a job with them. I'm going to repeat it. The sponsorship that employers provide for foreign employees is usually with getting an LMI. The employer has that cost, which is usually like $1,000 or so, and they ensure that you have a job with them. But what do we think sponsorship means, especially those of us in Nigeria or in Africa who have been seeing these sponsored jobs? We think it is that image that is there, the image on the right, that job ad that I saw, jobs that offer to pay associated costs for you, including relocation costs, accommodation costs, family visa, probably have you pay back when you come to Canada, giving you a, a, a um, vacation of like 28 days and all that. Is what a lot of us think. So a lot of people reach out and say, Shay, can I get a sponsored job in Canada? This is what they are thinking of. However, I have showed you what sponsorship, when you hear sponsored jobs in Canada, people who live in Canada know it is that the employer will actually um, take care of the financial cost of your LMIA and ensuring that you get a visa to come to Canada. Canadian employers don't sponsor in quotes candidates to work in Canada but they can assist you, assist in bringing foreign workers by securing that LMIA and bearing the cost of the LMIA and other related costs. I'm going to explain a bit what LMIA is. Now, however, however, there are some jobs that offer accommodation. Example, jobs like living care worker. There are some farm worker jobs, home care worker, and a few jobs like that. They provide accommodation because you actually have to be in the same place with the person you're taking care of or the farm workers, the farmer, or the owner of the farm might prefer that they stay in a particular place so it's easier for them to get to the farm. And a few jobs like that. There are jobs like that that offer that extra benefits, but Canadian employers don't sponsor in the way we saw in that job ad that deceived me and that I spent uh, a lot of money. I'm not going to tell you how much that I don't laugh at me. A lot of money because I believed those things. 
Now, an EMIA is a document from Employment and Social Development in Canada that gives the employer permission to hire a temporary worker. So an employer in Canada cannot just wake up one day and go and employ someone from outside of Canada, like a, like a foreign worker. They have to get that LMIA, yeah? It's a document that they get from the government of Canada. It costs about $1,000, and it's the employer that bears the cost. And once they get their LMIA approved, then they can sponsor a foreign worker. Now, I see a lot of these job ads on Facebook and on online asking you, asking the employee to pay for LMI. I see put LMI and they put some amount there because people do not know they get, they jump into these scams and they pay them those monies. Now, my sponsored job or not would usually be stated in the job adverts. So when you see a job ad, they would usually state whether this job is an LMIA sponsored job. Now, notice that I'm not just saying sponsored job, I'm saying LMIA sponsored because that is actually what it means in Canada. A sponsored job means that the job is LMIA sponsored. Now, look at this job ad for a licensed practical nurse. You can see we have underlined in red. It says LMIA sponsorship available for foreign applicants. It means that this employer has gotten an LMIA and they have an LMIA for you. So they're ready to sponsor you with LMIA and to ensure that you actually get the job when you come to Canada. That is the sponsorship. You can see they didn't say anything about to provide accommodation, vacation, um, flight ticket. There's nothing like that. It's just that LMIA sponsorship. Let's look at another one. Now, if you look at the one on the left, this is an English teacher in South, in South Korea. This is the Toronto on Twitter. I'm looking for someone who can teach South Korea. And you can see full visa processing and sponsorship. Yeah, so they are going to sponsor the my the employer, and then they are going to take charge of the visa processing, pay the cost of the visa processing. They are not going to do accommodation or all those other things, bring your family flight ticket. It's ridiculous for someone to even believe that. Now on the right, I've showed a job that is not offering overseas sponsorship. You can see we hire locally only, no overseas sponsorship. So when you see a job like this, you don't bother to apply if you're not in Canada because they are not offering sponsorship in quotes. They don't have an LMIA that will sponsor you and they are not going to take care of your visa and processes, okay? So that's what LMIA jobs mean. Yeah, I know that I've shattered some people's uh, uh, um, meats, I've shattered some people's hearts because if you're thinking that you can actually get jobs in Canada that will pay everything for you, pay your flight, Pay your accommodation, no. Sponsored jobs in Canada means that it's LMIA sponsored. They will give an LMIA, pay the cost, and also your visa cost. Now, I know some people are sad, like I said before, but do not despair. You can still get a sponsored job, one LMIA sponsored job in Canada, and I'm going to show you how. It is better for you to know the truth, to be walking on the right path, and to continue to believe a lie and to be giving money to someone who is taking your hard earned money and it's not going to give you anything. I think that that's a better thing. Now, the truth is people are getting jobs in Canada from outside in Canada. People are getting it. People are coming in. I've met a couple of people in the last couple of months who did come in with work permits. It's happening. The good news is that you can now process a work permit from inside Canada if you are in Canada on a visitor visa until February of 2025. So if you can come to Canada for a conference or come to Canada to visit someone or come to Canada on vacation up until February of 2025, or like before, where if you get a job, you have to go outside of Canada to apply for a work permit. Now, if you're in Canada, as a visitor, you can look for a job within the time before your visitor visa expires, and you can apply for a work permit in Canada and start working. And then, of course, you can use that as a route for permanent residence. So looking for shortcuts, just like me, and that my friend that I talked about, you know, that got duped of at least 300,000. That's what I know. I don't know the rest of the monies he paid them. So because people are looking for shortcuts and that's why they get duped. Get the skills and the know-how on getting a job in Canada so that you can stop being scammed. Now, while you are doing this, this one I'm saying is very important. Now you should underline it. While you are looking for a job in Canada, Try and explore other routes as well. Don't say the route that I want to take is work permit. Now, when I was trying to come to Canada, I was doing the express entry, which means I was in the express entry pool. At the same time, I was looking for a job 
I was trying to get some PMP. I was applying to Saskatchewan and other uh, provinces, and I was also trying to do study. I mean, this thing just had to work. I was exploring the routes that were possible for me to come to Canada. So, see, I mean, if Canada is your dream, just go ahead and explore this route. This is a great route because if you get this, if you get this route, you're just coming to Canada and you're working straight away and together with your family. But explore other routes. Don't stay on this one route. You can explore study. You can explore PNP. Canada is concentrating on PNP this year. This year, and this is one route that you need to start looking at. There are different provinces provinces that are getting people inside Canada, and you don't want to miss that opportunity because you're just focused on this work permit. So let's look at some truths, some lies, and some myths. Now, um, so lies are in red, truths are in green, myths are in blue. So one lie, Canadian employers don't sponsor. So people say Canadian employers sponsor um, employees. So this should be a truth. Canadian employers don't sponsor candidates to work in Canada. The sponsorship is the LMIA and visa sponsorship. So that's what they mean when they say sponsorship. But People who know that some of us don't know these things, who's taking that word sponsor, they've turned it around, get things to eat, to attract people who have no idea, to attract people who are clueless. And these people are paying them money, think, you know, the only thing I'll do is just pay these people, you know, and then I can go to Canada, uh, free accommodation, free flights, and all that. So that is a lie. Now, truth, you are restricted to one employer. So if an employer in Canada, um, invite you with an LMIA or get an LMIA to you, that means you have to look for that employer until that LMIA expires and maybe the employer renews it or you're able to get another job. Now, if like a business closes or there's a layoff, you cannot just change employers. Your new employer must get you an LMIA as well because you've come to Canada on an LMIA. If your LMI expires or your employer is no longer sponsoring you, you need to get another employer to sponsor you. Now, another truth is that this is a route to permanent residence in Canada. There are people in Canada on the, on the temporary residence visa, like a work permit, and then they are able to actually meet the requirements for one or two uh, um first entry or provincial or mini programs or permanent resident programs, and they are able to transit into permanent residence. So this is actually a route to permanent residence in Canada. Now, another truth is once you receive a job offer and your employer is ready to provide you with your LMIA, 90% of the job is done. The hard work is done. The hard work is just getting that job offer and getting that your LMIA. After that, you just follow the requirements to follow, to obtain a work permit in Canada, from your country, submit all the necessary papers and your work permit is actually approved. Now, another truth, in order to get a work permit, I'm just reiterating this, a foreign national must first get a valid offer from a Canadian employer. No job offer is equal to no work permit. And no work permit is no access to Canada. So if you wanted to come to Canada with this route, the first thing is that job offer with an LMIA, then you get a work permit, um, at all you, there's no access to Canada for you, except you're using some other routes. Another truth is do not expect results overnight. I mean, be patient and apply everywhere you can. Look, my friend I talked about, he was expecting overnight results. He didn't want to listen. Uh, and it's a shame because he didn't have a lot of money. And I can't just imagine him throwing away at least 300,000. It's painful. So give yourself time. Do not expect results overnight. Be patient. Apply everywhere you can and give yourself time. So I, I said give yourself time like twice because it's really important for me to stress that. Now, one of the truth is that selling or buying LMI is illegal. And I know there are people who sell LMIs. There are people who buy LMI. It is actually like a, there's a market for that in Canada. And I think the government is cracking down on them. It is illegal yeah, to sell or buy LMI. Some people sell LMIs for as much as 20,000 Canadian dollars. You can imagine buying an LMI for that amount and then it turns out either be fake or it turns out that the government finds out and cancels your job offer. So be careful if someone is telling you to sell or to buy LMI. Um, one of that lies that you can convert your work permit to permanent residence. Now, the reason why I say that's a lie is because in Canada, you don't convert anything. You can't come and convert work permit to, to PR. You can't convert um, study visa or convert a, a visit visa to a work permit. You have to actually apply for a work permit if you are a visitor. 
Yeah, so in order to become a permanent resident, you must meet all the requirements for one permanent resident route, the one you want to apply to. So the beautiful thing is that if you're in Canada, there are like 100 permanent residence routes. Believe it or not, there are so many permanent routes to Canada. So that's why it is great if you can actually be in Canada and then you start looking at all these routes. Now, these routes are not available to people who are outside of Canada. They just have a few routes, like five or six routes. But if you're actually in Canada, there's lots and lots more um, routes that you can use to come to Canada. Now, this is a myth. Um, this myth is that you will get every information you need on Facebook or social media, and that you can even find genuine jobs on Facebook or social media, which is where I was looking, which is where a lot of people are looking. Some people are even hearing from a friend who has a friend that has a friend. Now, please don't believe everything you see online, especially job adverts. Be very careful, especially if they ask you for pay for, to pay money. <laughs> They tell you to pay, it is likely a scam. Do you understand? But people will not hear. They tell you to pay, it is likely a scam. So it seems like I have dampened everyone's spirits. Like it seems as everything I've said um, has been like negative, but actually it has not. I just wanted to be open and honest. So if I'm saying all this thing, so what should you even consider this route? As somebody is saying, should I consider this route? Well, I'm going to tell you why you should consider this route. Because it is a viable route that has been used by people like yourself to relocate to Canada. Remember what I told you, we are amazed if you want to stay at Toronto Airport, coming in and you start asking them, you will see that a lot of them are also coming in with a work permit. Yeah. Now there are employers that are actually looking for foreign workers. Now, there is a labor crunch in Canada. There are some jobs that employers can't find workers for several reasons, and they are looking for foreign workers. Now, the good thing is that you're not going to pay any school tuition. Yeah? Um, it, I mean, whatever the proof of funds you're going to use to come to Canada under the work permit route is definitely cheaper than if you were coming in with study or any other route. And you only need a high school diploma. So no higher education is higher education is not compulsory. For example, an employer can say, I just need somebody with high school diploma, or I need somebody with a bachelor's, or I need something with this. So it's not compulsory that you have a degree or a master's or a PhD. You just need a high school diploma for most of those jobs. Your spouse and your children that are less than 18 years can relocate with you. Yeah, your spouse can work in Canada, your children, if you're a temporary resident visa in Canada, your children can go to school for free up until high school. And like I said before, this is a route to permanent residence. And that's the cocoa for most of us. We don't just want to come here and work and go back. We want to come here and stay. And this is one route that you can use to come here and stay. So how do you find and get these jobs in Canada without being scammed, without spending 500000 and above, without spending 850000 without selling your car and your land to give to someone who won't give you any results? The truth is that it's not, it's not rocket science. Getting a job in Canada is almost the same as getting a job anywhere. Yeah. So if you're in UK or in Nigeria or in Ukraine or in, in the US, getting a job follows certain basic steps. Now, there are some additional things you need to know because you're looking for a job from outside of the country. But basically, looking for a job in Canada has certain steps, certain requirements, certain things you, look, you need to look out for. And I'm just going to tell you what those things are. So now, how do you find and get the job in Canada? Number one, you need to know where to look. So, yeah. so if you're looking for a needle in a haystack and you don't know where to look, then you'll be looking and you will not find. Just the way I was you know, looking for jobs when I was looking for jobs and searching like someone who was possessed and I wasn't getting a job. Now, a lot of people look on certain websites, but uh, there are cities where you can easily get jobs in Canada. And there are recruiters that recruit from for foreign workers. So it's not just about going to look on Indeed or just searching on the internet. You need to be able to connect with these recruiters. Now, the recruiters most of the time are in Canada, yeah? And a lot of those recruiters that scam people, they don't live in Canada. So sometimes you wonder how are they able to be recruiters, you know, except they are connected to a recruiter who is actually in Canada. Yeah, so you need to know uh, if you qualify for the jobs. Now, if a job is looking for a chef and you have been an administrative assistant all your life, you're wondering how you're going to qualify. And I've seen people doing that. You need to qualify for that job. You need to know how to stand out from other applicants, how you're going to create your cover letter and your resume. Now, Canadian employers like a cover letter. Yeah, so 
don't just send resumes, send them a cover letter, sell yourself. You need to know how to follow up, when to follow up. How do these Canadian employers or how do Canadians like to be followed up? How, what is it that can piss off a Canadian? You need to know that, how to interview, and you need to know when to step back. Now, there are certain things that you would see that are red flags, and you need to have the sense to tell yourself that, man, this one, I need to step back, okay? Now, those are the things you need to know. Now, number one, know where to look. Like I said before, everyone knows Indeed or, or Canada Job Bank, yeah? Yes, there are jobs there, but then there are also recruiters that recruit for foreign workers. You need to know who those recruiters are, connect with them. There's so many of them connect with as many as possible, especially those who are recruiting for the jobs that you are interested in. Some recruit for care jobs, some recruit nurses, some recruit truck drivers, some recruit administrative assistants. So there are different ones that recruit for different kinds of jobs. Now, know how to stand out from other applicants. Now, don't forget whether you are in Nigeria or whatever country, if there's a job advert, you are not the only one that is saying it. You are not the one, only one applying. And then to make things worse, a lot of people want to come to Canada. Like Canada is like the darling of everybody now. Like it's an immigration country to go to because you can easily become a Canadian citizen in five years. First, depending. Yeah, so, so there are so many people applying for that job. So if you see a job ad, you need to be able to stand out from other applicants, yeah? Because these Canadian employers, nobody has time to be going through your CV. If they take a look at your CV and they don't see what it is that they're looking for, they will, where is it going? It's going into the bin, yeah? So you need to know how to create your resume and your cover letter. Resume in Canada style. So there's some Canadian style resumes um, and different kinds of resumes. Depending on what you want to highlight in your resume, you need to know how to do those things. Now, you need to know how to follow up. When do you follow up? How do you follow up? Do you call? Do you send emails? Is it in the morning, afternoon, night? Um, if you are not sending those emails at the right time with, with, the, with the realization that you are not on the same time zone with these people that you're emailing, then you're, they might not just be seeing your email or your email might just be going to spam or your email might not be attractive enough, especially with your subject line for them to open. And then very importantly, you will interview. There is nobody in Canada, no employer or no recruiter that will actually employ you without having a chat with you. I mean, it might not be a proper interview, but they will have a chat. First of all, they need to be sure you can speak English. And then of course, ask a few questions to be sure that you are actually qualified to do the job. You need to know how to interview. If you have ever interviewed before, you know that within the first five minutes, you already know if this person is gonna get the job or not. How do you stand out when it comes to interview? Then, like I said before, you need to know when to step back. Um, there are certain red flags that might be there. If you don't know, you will just go ahead and apply to a job that is either a fake job or from a fake recruiter, or they are actually going to give you fake work permits. And I'm going to talk a bit about the red flags. Now, when you get um, a job offer or a communication and email, ask yourself some questions. Um, did you actually apply for the job? or you just received a random email that said you were selected for a job in Canada. Now, some people send me certain emails. I said, I got this email. I don't know if it's true. Help me to check if it's a scam. And I asked them, did you apply for the job? And of times they say no. So, for the job, then, then you know that, I mean, you didn't apply. How did this person get your email? Or it's just like those emails we get or those text messages we used to get to say you have won something in this competition. But I didn't do any competition, do you understand? So I know I didn't win. So if you didn't apply, that is probably a scam you should run. Now, did you go through multiple stages of interviews via phone or Zoom, or was there no interview at all? Someone just sent you a message and say, okay, we're looking for an administrative assistant. You just sent you and they say you're employed. How? They didn't call you, they didn't send you any questions. It's probably a red flag. Now, the salary that they are offering, is it well above or even below the Canadian average for a similar job? Now, let's say in Canada, they are paying $25 an hour for that job. Someone is offering you $45 an hour or is offering you $12 an hour, which is below minimum wage, whichever way it goes. If you see that, it's a red flag. You need to start asking more questions when you see things like that. Now, are there additional benefits that they offer which seems too good to be true? Um, are they providing you with a car, accommodation, airline tickets, visa costs, all those kind of things that we talked about earlier, it's a red flag. Then did they tell you to pay any monies in advance? Some people say that they are told to pay monies via Western Union so that the job offer and visa is secured. That's BS as far as I'm concerned. 
that is a red flag. Then have you found anything online about that company that we are hiring you? Did you go online? People that say, Shay, help me check. I'm like, have you checked online? Is there a location? Is there an address? Is there employee re re reviews? Have you called the number to find out if this number actually exists? And if there's a company that actually has this number. And there are there a lot of grammatical errors in the email or in the letter. There's usually that. It's a red flag. Yeah. So I want to do a little bit of check-in. I know I've been talking for like, what, maybe 30, 35 minutes. I want to do a little bit of check-in. Are we getting value? Are we still here? Are we listening? Um, so let me know in the chat. Do you feel more knowledgeable about how to get jobs in Canada? Um, have you learned something today that you didn't know before? Especially about what a sponsored job is. Um, and, and even if you use a tiny fraction of what I've showed you so far, um, do you feel that you've learned at least one thing or gotten at least one percent of value from what we have shared so far? So let's do a check in um, and I'm going to wait for a couple of seconds to see what you're saying in the chat. If you have actually gotten value, don't forget that you need to be a subscriber for you to be able to make comments or for you to be able to ask questions. Yeah, you need to be a subscriber. So go ahead and click the subscribe button. And let me know in the chat if you are getting value. I'm going to wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, so let's go on. Um, so as a foreigner, you can come to Canada to work under the Temporary Foreign Worker Program. And there's a program in Canada called the Temporary Foreign Worker Program. What is the Temporary Foreign Worker Program? It is a program of the government of Canada that allows employers to hire foreign nationals as employees on a temporary basis, sometimes on a seasonal basis. And it's basically to fill job shortages in Canada. So employers in Canada can employ uh, foreign workers under this temporary foreign worker program. Now, now this is just a simple six step process. An employer wants to hire foreigners, maybe because they can't find anybody in Canada or because these jobs are usually done by people outside who are outside of Canada. Whatever reason the employer wants to hire foreigners, the employer applies for an LMA. An LMA is not free. Employer has to pay about $1,000 and wait for the processing um, to get that LMIA, they also have to show that they haven't found anybody in Canada to do these jobs and they actually need people from outside of Canada. Now, the employer advertises the job for a certain length of time to fulfill the conditions of the LMIA, whatever that length of time is. They also give these jobs to recruiters or they post it on certain websites. You see it, you apply for the job, you go through an, an interview process, the employer likes you, the employer hires you sends you the LMIA, sends you a job offer, sends you valid documents, you use those documents, you apply for a work permit, you get your work permit, and then you can come to Canada. That's it, that's just the six step process. Don't allow anyone to complicate it for you. This is the process. Now, here's what I know about you. Since you are here, you want to know how to get a job in Canada as soon as possible. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to be scammed. You don't want to waste money as well. You don't want to make any mistakes and you want guidance or someone who can help you succeed. The truth is that a lot of people don't know who to trust. If you're like this person is saying, this person is saying, everybody is saying one thing or the other. It's so difficult. I get it and I understand that sometimes it's difficult to know who to follow. It's difficult to know what to listen to. It's difficult to know who to believe. Yeah. Now, we have gotten to this point in the presentation where I've told you what a sponsored job is. I've told you red flags to look out for. I've told you how you can stand out to employers, how you can find those employers, and what the temporary foreign worker program is. Now, you have three choices. Number one is that you can live here. In fact, you can even leave the webinar now. I'm going to look for someone who can run a sponsored job package for you. Some people will not here. I'm serious about it. Someone will still live here and go and meet someone, an agent, to run a package for you. Have you asked that agent, who has he helped? Like, you know, family, family members, are they all in Canada? So, I mean, you can go and look for someone to run that package for you. That's one thing. 
Or number two, you can leave here, take the information that we have shared so far, put it into action and get results that you could not get before. And that can obviously happen, yeah? Depending on how smart you are, you can take this information and go and use it and you get results, yeah? That's the second choice. Now, the true choice is that you can allow me to play an active role in your success by showing you how to go at it effectively, yeah? And so that you don't waste money or so that you don't waste time. Sometimes you can even be able to waste time, but wasting money is actually a no-no. You shouldn't waste time. Then wasting time and money is like wasting um, valuable resources. And hopefully you're going to go with your third choice. Not the first choice, yeah? You're going to go with touch. And if you've gained any value so far, then you will like what I've got for you next because I'm going to show you how you can go about the third choice and how I can be involved in helping you to know how to look for jobs in Canada with the littlest, as little commitment financially as possible. The truth is that I can reduce your stress with this process by showing you how to go about it from A to Z using what I've called the Canada Japan Work Permit Handbook. Now, this is a simple step-by-step -step guide to finding and applying to jobs in Canada. So finding, applying, and securing genuine jobs in Canada without being scammed. And that without being scammed is like, um, it, it's like the key word that you need to be able to get these jobs without being scammed. Now, now, what do you get with the Canada JAPA Work Permit Handbook? Number one, we show you how to search for and find real jobs in Canada. Yeah. And if I was to price that, it will be 40,000. How do you find these jobs? How do you even start? Where do you look? We show you that. Number two, details of genuine recruiters that recruit for these jobs. Now, it's not just about the websites. Yes, we're going to show you the websites, but we're also going to show you recruiting agencies in Canada. So people who have been employed sometimes by the government, they have been certified to employ foreign workers. So they are not playing around. They are not asking you for money, but they are actually recruiting for certain recruiters who want um who wants workers from outside Canada? And if I was surprised that, that would be 50,000 naira. Now you also get to learn how to craft your resume, which is your CV and your cover letter, Canadian style. So you stop applying to many jobs with no results. There are some people who tell me they've been applying forever, but they have never gotten a job. It's because of several reasons. That can be one of several reasons, one of which is your CV, and your resume, your cover letter. So we're gonna show you samples and also you know, the writing process, how to create it, the keywords that you should highlight and the value of that is 25,000. Now these three things that I've shown you, the total value is 115,000, yeah? If those things were to be sell, sold separately. Now, um, now, if I were to price this product for what it's worth, it would be going for that 115,000. And the truth is that many people, some of us here, have paid all these quack agents like much money, like three times this amount, and they've gotten absolutely zero results. People are paying as we're speaking now. People are paying their money. Immediately we live here, people will pay their money. So they've heard these things, and they will get nothing. If you get this as 115, you will be getting a great deal. But because you are here, and I know that 115 is probably ridiculous, and you probably stand before you don't want to pay that much money, or you know you would like to get value for a lot less, you'll be able to get full access to everything that makes up this wonderful program called the Canada Japan Work Permit Handbook for only 25000 which is like amazingly ridiculous. Some people have even said I'm crazy for pricing it at this amount, but it's 25,000. And to get access, simply ask for a purchase link from the affiliates that invited you today. So someone actually sent you the link to this webinar, go back to the person and said, you know what? I was mad. I want to get the work permit handbook. Tell me how I can get it. Now let us get to the good part. Since we have talked about money, we've gotten that out of the question. Um, in addition, you get some amazing, these are limited time special bonuses that you get if you make your purchase today. So we're going to send you an updated, updated list of employers who have positive LMIs. Remember that I said for an employer to employ foreign workers, they need that positive LMI. Yeah, so you don't want to be just uh, applying to employers who even don't want LMIs or don't apply for LMIs. You want to be targeting those employers that have LMIs, yeah? Uh, and that is what will part of the bonuses, yeah? 
then we have consistent updates on a lot of programs. So there are a lot of other programs that are related to getting a job in Canada. An example is the home care worker pilots. There are related routes that the AIPP, the home care worker, and some other programs that are related to getting a job in Canada. We give consistent updates. So this work permit handbook is not a static course. It's not a static training. It is consistently updated. And as we get more information about the home care worker, the home care worker pilot is actually starting up again. This is another good route. And then there's the AIPP and we give you information about all that. So it's much more than just how to send resumes, but it's also how to get jobs using all these other routes that some people may not actually know about. And the key bonus is that you have access to me and my team. We don't look for those jobs for you because I'm not a recruiter, but I'm going to show you and the recruiters that can actually help you. So you can reach out to us by email when you have issues. You can have, you can have questions. You can reach out and ask. And if it's absolutely necessary, you can book a consultation. Some of our consultations are free. Some of them are paid. So depending on the severity of your own case, you can book a consultation. The most important thing is that you save time and money. You don't want to be working. Can you imagine working for the last six months and throwing the money away? It's like carrying your money, going to the bank, taking your money, putting it in the toilet and flushing it down. When someone takes your money and doesn't give you anything. And then you're also saving time. So if this does not have way more value, and what's more than the 25,000 you invest for it today? Some people, there are some phones you can't even buy for 25,000. I don't think there's any phone. As well, 25,000 naira now, even the cheapest phone. And this is what we're pricing the work permit handbook. And trust me, it's not going to stay at this price. This is the entry price. As we add more updates, I was making more robust. The price is going to also be increasing soon. So I am asking you to make a fully informed decision. Now, this product can help you find a genuine job in Canada if you're prepared to do the work that is required. It can also show you how to get jobs using other immigration routes like the AIPP and the home care worker. So unless you are committed and serious about your success and you're committed to taking action, then please do not sign up. Yeah, it's better for you not to sign up. Um, if you are not committed, but if you're committed, then this is actually for you and it can take you to where you're going to. So we have a strict no refund policy. This is a high value product. Uh, this is a product that I'm taking the time to explain. I'm not hiding anything so that you know if this is what you want or you prefer to go and get some other product or talk to some other agent who's gonna tell you the sweet things that you want to hear. So only make purchases if you are ready to do the work. So these are everything that you're getting. The work permit handbook, you're getting how to search for jobs, you're getting the list of LMI, you're getting top recruiters, you're getting CVs, sample CVs, and all that. And if you want to make a purchase, kindly ask for a purchase link from the affiliate that invited you today. So there are several affiliates that sell on state courts, they sell on expert and seller, they are authorized to sell, they are authorized to send you a link. So ask them for a link, not here, not on the comments, send them a message, a chat, or in the WhatsApp group, wherever you got their link, and tell them to send you the link. Now, the thing is thoughts become things, yeah? A lot of times we don't think about it, but a lot of times we are what we think about. So if you see it in your mind, you'll be able to hold it in your hand. Now we're coming to a close. Uh, as we finish our webinar, I'm rounding up, you might find yourself thinking and sitting down in the in the maybe category and thinking, hmm, is this going to work? Is this for you? And usually when people start saying, hmm, is this going to work? It's usually for a few reasons. Number one, people are thinking about the cost. Um, but for this one, I'm wondering, uh, it's cheap in my, it's affordable. Let me know you are cheap because nothing like this is cheap. It's affordable in my opinion. So, I mean, everybody here, I feel, if you're committed, you can afford this amount. It is affordable and it has value. Now, another thing you might be thinking is, will this work? Is this risky? And are there testimonials of people who have actually been able to relocate using this route? The thing is that it works, yeah? Uh, the people who can pay those agents those large sums, do they ask them whether it works? 
<laughs> so they just pay monies without even seeing any risk. So it works. Um, um, there are little risk involved. The only thing is that you have to work at it. And then in terms of testimonials, we're going to be uploading testimonials when we get them. Now, a lot of us know this village people syndrome. Some people don't like putting their face out there or putting their documents out there because of the village people syndrome. They are scared. They don't want anybody to compromise their success. Yeah. But don't wait for somebody else's testimonial for you to be able to make your own. You make your own testimonials, yeah? But trust me, this works. It's working. It will continue to work whether you believe it or not. Another question people might ask is, can I do this? You can do it. You don't need to get someone to do it for you. You can find the time. It's what is important to you, the time for it. I'm telling you, if something is important to you, find the time. So first have kids, it's it's all to raise kids, but we do find the time. So if you're, you don't have the time, you want someone to do it for you, someone to run it for you. They can run it for you, take money from you, and you get nothing. Another question, can I combine this with other routes to Canada? Definitely. That is my recommendation. I've said it before. You can combine this with the study route. You can combine this with the PNP. You can combine this with um, the, the express entry, okay? Um, I wish there was more time for me to actually talk about it in detail and give you more value, but there's actually no time. And that's why I'm inviting you to get the work permit handbook so that, you know, you can get my email address, you can get my WhatsApp, and we can take the conversation beyond this. And the truth is, I can only show you the right approach. I can only tell you the truth. I can't make you do the right thing. I can't make you do the things that I'm saying, but I sure hope you do. Um, so something is impossible until you decide to break through. You might be thinking it's not possible. When I was trying to come to Canada, I actually got to a point where I thought I would never come again. Everything don't scatter. Do you understand? There was nothing working, you know, but it actually happened. Why? Because I kept at it, because I was resilient, because I wouldn't um, give up. So this is everything you're getting. Like I said, it's a value of 165K but you're getting it for only 25K today and you're getting all of those amazing bonuses. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Canada Japan Work Permit Handbook will save you from feeling helpless. It will save you from wasting time, wasting money, trying to relocate to Canada through the work route. This is an affiliate product. So if you were invited by someone, ask them to show you how you can pay, yeah? Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, I think I have gone through my presentation and I'm going to come back to you and take your questions. Thank you so much. Um, and then I'll stop sharing and then we can take the conversation out of here. So hi, everybody. So I'm back. Thank you so much for listening to my rant. I'm sure I was ranting and talking all over the place. Um, but I'm glad that you stayed there and listened. So I will actually be taking the question. I know there will be like 1 million questions. <laughs> Don't forget that you need to subscribe in order for you to um, answer the questions. Now there are like 1 million questions and they are scrolling, but I'm going to try and answer. Uh, people are saying they gained a lot. Um, and then, like I said, I was going to be brutally honest. So, uh, so I'm so sorry if I have busted the meat of so many agents who say that they are sponsored jobs. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see if there are any of these chats that we can... I'm going to pin the message, the ones that I'm going to be answering uh okay let's see this one now what's the pinned one okay will it be possible can everybody see it will it be possible to put your prizes in us dollars since you are since you are addressing people from different nations. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about that. But on the platforms, the prizes are also there in US dollars. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, I don't know what the price is, yes, but yes, I stand corrected. The prizes can also be shown in US dollars. Someone says, does it expire after purchase? 
um, I don't know what you mean by expired, but no, if you purchase it, you have access for as long as you need it. So your access to it doesn't expire. Okay. Let's look at another question. Um, someone is still asking how much is 25,000 in order in Kenyan, um, in Kenyan currents. I just wish I knew, I'm so sorry. I didn't get the prices in the other currencies, but yes, you can see the prices in other currencies if you click on the platforms to make purchases. Um, someone says beautiful. Olu Ibi, Ibi. Thanks a lot. What are the categories of worker that has the highest possibility of getting work in Canada? Some is in Nigeria and not in Canada. So it depends on the job that they are looking for. Um, in the sales uh, video that we have for this product, I showed some of the jobs. So there are farm, farm workers, home care workers, there's truck drivers, administrative workers, chef. There are lots of workers, but the highest one, if it's for unskilled jobs, is the home care workers and the um, farm workers. But there can be absolutely any job, yeah? Any job that you are qualified for um, and that an employer is looking for, you can actually um, find. Okay, let me also look. Okay, I, I mean, I'm going to have to pin this question because I like it. Somebody's saying, if I would like you to help me do everything, how much will it be? You know, and this is the question that actually makes people to get scammed because you don't want, I mean, if you listen to my presentation, I said, don't be lazy, be ready to do something. So if you're looking for somebody to do everything for you, what, what do you want the best to do? You want somebody to go and be searching for jobs for you, applying on your behalf. I don't do that. That's what those recruiters are for. If you can connect with them, uh, you should be able to do this yourself. So I don't offer that. So I'm not looking for um, your money, uh, everything. I'm also, if you're like this or you have this mindset, someone will actually be taking your money from you and you will get nothing out. I mean, I'm not saying it with malice, but I think that that's the... Uh, Another. Someone says, do I need the same person asking, do I need IELTS to get a job in Canada? Okay, so you need whatever the employer says you need, yeah? yeah? Generally, you don't need IELTS, but if an employer wants to be sure that you can speak English properly, maybe because you're doing a customer service job, they might request that you have IELTS, and in that case, you would need to have it. But generally, no. Okay, can I get a job in Canada? <laughs> as a female this is an amazing question um so when i first came to canada i used to take the bus um and then some a lot of the drivers were female drivers yeah there are a lot of uber drivers in canada that are female drivers the government bus drivers are female drivers and canada canada is doesn't discriminate based on sex so yes you can get any job you qualify for whether you are female or whether you are male uh someone says is there and look, so this is not, this is an express entry question. So we're only answering um, questions about the Canada Jaguar. So also it's asking what's the difference between Jaguar system and this handbook. So the Jaguar system is for those who want to come to Canada to study. This is not for study. This is for those who want to come to Canada on a work permit. So that is the difference between the two of them. Uh, let me move up and see if there are any questions there. Um, a lot of people saying thank you. They got value. I am so glad to hear that. Um, if not, I would have been in a lot of soup. Wasted your time and mine. Says, how does one know the original LMIA? Now, I think I talk about this a bit in the workbook. Um, but and, at, and a lot of times, the source from where you got something will make you know whether it's original or not. So if you have actually contacted an employer yourself, you've gone to the interview and they're sending you this LMI, you should be able to know that it's 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 the real LMI. Yeah. But when you're going through the means that you are you are not sure of, you can get an LMI and you can start asking if this is a real LMI or not. So um, that's a conversation that we need to take out of here. If you look at in the workbook, you would see that there are samples of LMIs, but that alone will not make you know whether the LMI is real or not. Um, let me see. Oh, somebody said, um, is someone questioned? Uh, thank you for all those who are saying great job. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you run away. 
uh, because we also share very useful videos here. Uh, someone's asking, can I get a job that relates to electrical in Canada? Why not? Um, Canada is also a place where they look for electrical engineers now. Um, I'm trying to understand this question. This person, I'm pinning it up. Does the temporary foreign worker qualify one for express entry and PMP towards PR? So I talked about it before. If you're in Canada on a temporary foreign worker program, or on a work permit, you also need to qualify for express entry, PNP, or whichever permanent residence route. So it's not about whether the, the temporary foreign worker itself qualifies. You need to qualify on other things. You need to get your IELTS, you get, need to get the requisite work experience. But the temporary foreign worker program, if you have that work experience, can help you to qualify for the work experience part. You also need to qualify on the IELTS um, and other things. So it's it's... It's not as straightforward as that. Uh, how do couples go through work permit together? Um, so if you're applying, one of you gets a job and you're applying, you would put your spouse as your dependent. I think that's what your question is asking. Someone says, is there any age limits? Mm. Beautiful question. Is there any age limits to getting a job in Canada? No. Is there any age limit to getting a job in Nigeria? I don't think so. Canada doesn't discriminate based on age. And there's no discount for those who have purchased the Canada Japa system for the person asking. This is a very um, affordably priced product. So there's no discount. Someone says, I was not invited by anyone. How can I pay? So how did you know about the the webinar, I'm sure you didn't see it in your dream and an angel didn't tell you. So you knew about it somehow. How did you know? Think about it. How did I know? Did I see it on Facebook, on whose page? And you go back there and ask the person. Can I bring my family to Canada if, uh, if I'm getting a job? Yes, like I said in my presentation, yes, you can apply with your family. I saw one job. Um, so I saw one question, so I saw a job. Um, there are no age limits. I'm just trying to look at the questions. Um, so can someone with secondary schools or come to Canada to work as a health care? Now, I'm going to answer directly so that this answers all the other people asking this kind of questions. You can come to Canada to work at a job that you actually qualify for. So. Just because you have secondary school results doesn't mean you can work as a healthcare worker. Maybe they're asking if you have a first aid experience or first aid certificate. They're asking if you have the experience. You need to actually meet with the um, requirements of that job. Simple. It looks like getting a job in Nigeria. If I want a job as an engineer, because I love engineers, I can't because I'm not an engineer. I don't have an engineering um, certificate or education. Or even work experience, the employer will not consider me. So think about it like that. It doesn't require West. Um, getting a job does not require West. So it doesn't require your education credential. Um, someone is, if you're asking a question about PNP or study, I'm not going to answer. Uh, okay, let me answer this question. I'm going to pin it up. It says, if you already have a visitor visa, how do you use your visitor visa to get a work permit? How long can you use your work permit to stay in Canada? I think I addressed this when I was talking about, when I was in the presentation. Um, you, If you have a visitor visa, you can come to Canada and within the, the validity of your visitor visa, you get a job. You have to get a job before you can apply for work permit. So work permit is not just, I'm applying for work permit. You have to get a job first. So while you're here, you get a job, you stay in Canada, you don't have to leave. You apply for a work permit and then you can start working. Your work permit is valid for how long your LMIA is valid for. Your employer can extend it for you, or if you've gotten the requisite experience, you can apply for permanent residence using any route that you actually qualify for. I hope that just explains it, especially for those who have, have that question. Uh, how do you know your accredited affiliates? Oh, you're asking me that question. <laughs> uh, so I've answered this question about my team handling all the experience. So we don't do that. We don't handle for you. And I don't know the amount in CDs. I'm so sorry. Um, 
Um, okay, so I'm asking the same questions that we have answered before. So um, I know time is money, so I'm not going to answer those questions that we've answered before. So thank you, Rosaline, Marcos. Thank you for the for you said wonderful presentation, and I'm grateful that you were here too. Now, someone says, what is the average monthly salary in Canada with skilled work? So I can't answer that for you because, I mean, salaries differ per province, they differ per job, uh, sometimes they even differ per city, yeah? So I can't say. You can actually go online and do research. These are things that are not hidden. Canada doesn't hide the wages information. You can find it online. A translator's needed in Canada, I don't know. Can I get a teaching job in Canada if they are looking for? Um, um, someone is asking everything that I need. Let me pin it up. Everything that I, I will need to get a PR when I come in with a work permit. Is it the Canada Japan system? Um, so if you there's so many routes. I don't know the routes that you want to use to get permanent residence. But we show you how to get a work permit. You should actually concentrate on getting your work permit. And then if you actually get a work permit and you're in Canada, getting permanent residence uh, should not be a problem. We're going to be adding such stuff to the work permit as we go on. So, I mean, if it's things that people are asking for, then we'll be, we'll be adding them. Uh, so this is a question from God's Gifts. Uh, are there LMI exempt jobs for foreign workers outside Canada? Are the jobs restricted to certain occupations? So when you come to LMI exempt jobs, um, so that's a completely different story. Um, you need to be in, yes, so there are certain categories that can get LMI exempt jobs. If someone is transferring from their company in Nigeria to their company in Canada, they don't need an LMI, yeah? They, their company is just transferring them, so they're coming to work in the same company. Then there are certain uh, occupations or certain job categories that are LMI exempt, but these are not like everywhere. Most of the jobs that you will need to come here as a foreigner, you need an LMI. Except your company is transferring you. Um, so if, let me pin up this question before I start answering it. It's a good question. So I'm pinning this up and it says, if your LMI expires, when your employer does not renew for you, can you be allowed to stay and look for another work? Um, so yes, you can look for another job. You can stay in Canada and look for another work. Well, you, oh, you need to revert to probably a visitor status while you are doing that. I'm wondering why your employer will not um, someone says, how do, would you help in all of these requirements? No. So I'm not a recruiter and I'm not a job agent, so I can't. And a lot of the people who are, who are sending you, are looking for to give monies, they are not recruiters either. So you need to be careful. careful. Uh, you need to be careful. Um, someone says this, the fee is 643 cities in Ghana. Are you sure? Ghana cities. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, with the price of the JAPA cost increase or decrease? So we're not, this is not about JAPA system, but if you're asking about the work permit handbook, the price will be increasing. Soon. Um, so if you leave, if you don't speak English, you only speak French, like I said before, the employer might want people who speak English. So I can't give a general answer for what an employer wants. It depends on the employer. So employers are even looking for people who can actually speak French, yeah? Because maybe their own clientele is French. So they might want you rather than someone else who does not speak French. So it's proof of funds required for LMIA. Um, so what they're asking is, is proof of funds required if you want to come to Canada on a work permit? The answer is yes and no. So proof of funds, you are coming to Canada to work and you're also presenting a document that said, I will start work on the... First of June, for example, and this is my this is my income. Yeah. Now, before you actually do come to Canada, you need monies for your flight ticket. You need monies to process your your um, monies to process your your visa if that's applicable. You also need monies for your um, dependents. They're coming. So, whatever monies you need before your job actually starts, you need to show the proof of funds for that for that. Okay. So, you actually do need proof of funds, but at least you're not showing proof of funds for the next one year. You just need proof of funds to show that you can cover yourself until your job starts. Um, okay. Let me see if we have any more. 
questions we have uh, a few more minutes. Someone is asking, can I come to Canada and answer this kind of question? What CU is asking, can I come to Canada as a driver with secondary certificates? As a driver, what kind of driver are you? Do you have the qualification that is required? So just think about it like that. Like I said, it's not rocket science. It's actually common sense. Um, if you were looking for a housekeeper and I came to you and I don't have any experience as a housekeeper, I've never done housekeeping, I've never been trained as a housekeeper, would you employ me? So it's the same thing. So but if I meet the requirements, you will be happy to employ me, okay? Uh, I just answered the question about proof of funds. So I'm not going to be answering that again. Um, let me look for questions that I haven't answered. Mm -hmm. What is minimum wage? So minimum wage differs from province to province. I think in Ontario, where I live, I think it's about $16 an hour. So it's different in different places. That information is, is public, so you can go on Google and Google will tell you what it is. Um, and also, there are no age limits. Okay, someone says, do recruiters ask for consultation fee? And I like that question. Like I said, when I was presenting, if you asked for money, it's probably a scam. So these recruiters actually get paid by the employers. They are not going to get paid by you. So they are not going to be asking you for money, okay? Okay. They don't ask you to come and pay that 300000 or whatever amount that people ask you to pay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Someone say, who are those who qualify for care workers? <laughs> so the people that meet the requirements of the job now. Um, I can't believe someone is still asking this question, but let me just believe that this person asked the question before I actually went through my presentation. Can we get the total price to pay once we get work sponsorship? Um, well, I don't understand this question. I hope you mean something different than asking if you are looking for somebody to pay money to. If you have money to dash someone, Sha, <laughs> you can actually give them money. Uh, how do I pay the 25000 I got the information via Facebook adverts. That's amazing. So Facebook adverts, who did the adverts? Okay, who did the adverts? You need to be talking to that person. So go back to the adverts and see who did the advert. That's the person that actually invited you. I'm surprised that people... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, someone says I already have the Express Entry. Is it compulsory to get this handbook? If you have the Canada Express Entry, it is not compulsory to get this. Yeah, this is a bonus in the Express Entry. So you actually don't need this. But if you're doing the Express Entry, also try to go at it, get your IELTS and all that. And you can also use the work permit as well. You can do the two together. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to just browse through the questions to see if there's anyone I haven't answered. Okay, so don't forget that in today's webinar, we talked about what a sponsored job is. So we are all now aware that a sponsored job, mean, a sponsored job means an LMIA sponsored job. It doesn't mean that the employer will take all the burden of the cost for you coming to Canada or all the burden for your family, your flight ticket accommodation, that does not happen. So please, when someone is telling you to pay 300000 500000 please be aware that I'm not saying that all of them are scam. It's likely a scam. Um, okay, so don't forget to get the work permit handbook. Don't forget that we are continually updating. This is an entry price at 25000 It is very affordable. There, there is anybody here that cannot afford that. Try and combine um, the work permit handbook with your study. If you're actually, actually going for study, combine it with express entry if you're trying to do express entry. The thing is that you must jackpot this year. You must jackpot this 2023, and I want to be able to help you to do that. If jackpot is your dream and Canada is your dream, because apparently in Canada, you're going to get permanent residence, unlike going maybe to the UK or going to the US, 
a lot of people from the US are complaining there's no routes to permanent residence, but in that, there is a route to permanent residence. So you want to come here. You want to get this work permit, combine it with other routes so that you can come to Canada. Your dependents can come with you. Someone is asking your dependents can come with you. Um, your spouse can come with you. And if you're a temporary, if you have a, a temporary work permit in Canada, your children can go to school for free until high school. And I pinned up a question there, how long does how long does the temporary foreign worker program visa last before renewal? So it depends on the LMA that you get. Yeah. So if an employer has given you an LMA for two years, then it lasts for two years. If your employer has given you an LMA for one year, it lasts for one year. And then it is now due for a renewal. Okay. So it's not a one cap fit all. It depends on the job. Um, someone is saying, I, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I have a sibling in Saskatchewan who has a company willing to help me move from Nigeria. I actually got an employment letter from for a home care. What are the documents required? Your sibling is in Canada now, and your sibling has uh, a company. Why are you not asking me what are the requirements? I wouldn't know because I don't know the details of what that job is. Yeah. So the employer should be able to tell you, and then you know what it is that you need to get the job, and to be able to come. There's no there's no age limits. I'm sure there are some people that are just joining now because they're asking questions I've already answered. Mm -hmm. uh, someone says, now there's a question that's here, I can't find it, but the person asked between the study permit and work permit, which one is better? There's no one that is better. If you listen to me during the presentation, I said do all of them together. I was doing all of them together because I wanted to jack up our means. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, can't say that it's this one or this one. I don't guarantee success or I don't guarantee outcomes. But if you have your hands in so many pots, one of them will work. So there's nothing wrong with doing the study permit and the work permit at the same time. There's no one that is better than the other. Yeah, so you can do the two, actually. Um, I want to look if there are more questions here. The person that sent the link is an accredited. Um, um, okay, so there are lots of questions that I've answered before. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me what, no, so there are questions about what are my chances of getting a job in Canada? Oh my goodness, I wish I had like a, a ball that can show me the future and I will know, but I don't know. So your chances are dependent on you meeting the job requirements, you catching the attention of the employer and the employer actually hiring you for that job. How can I get the workbook? Start <laughs> this year. Book, you go to the affiliate. So you saw this on an advert, maybe a Facebook advert, a Facebook page or something, whoever you saw this advert with, go and ask them how you can get the link. So we're not sharing any links here because there are so many people who have been invited by different people. Go back and ask them um, to that Facebook page or to that WhatsApp by saying, you know what, I'm ready to, to start the process, the work permit process. Please give me the link so that I can make my purchase with the affordable price of 25,000 before she is her turn and she increases it to 25,000. <laughs> So, um, because it's going to increase, yeah, we're adding more values every day. Um, and this is a product that's close to my heart uh, because I know how a lot of people would like to use this route. So I'm concentrating on it for now, building it up, adding value. And as soon as we do all that, the price is going to go up. I don't use my price increases as a marketing gimmicks. I don't say price will increase if it won't. So if I say it, that means it will. Um, how to convert visitor visa to PR. So you can't convert anything. If you didn't listen to this presentation, go and listen, you can't convert. I talked about how it is that you can go from visitor to PR. You are not converting anything. Um, so the, the company will give you this LMA. Let me pin up this question. It's a good question. Uh, will the company give you the LMA before or after you get into Canada? It's definitely before. You know why? because you need the LMA to actually apply for work permits. You, so you cannot put in a work permit application without the LMA. You need the LMA while doing, so they need to give you the LMA, give you the job offer before you actually apply um, for work permits. Mm -hmm. Since, since to my head, okay? Come on. 
Um, so uh, let me see if there are any more questions. Someone is still asking, can I get it open? I don't think I have to talk. I have already said how you can get it now. Oh my goodness. Um, where can I get can people are asking now? Um oh. how oh my goodness, I don't answer this question. Um there are no hows in these questions. <laughs> now, there's, I want to pin up this thing because I want to correct something. Now, this person is saying, what routes do you advise now? Study route or sponsored jobs? Okay, so when you say sponsored jobs, I hope you mean work permit because we've already clarified what sponsored jobs are. Stop looking for sponsored jobs in quotes. Make sure you are looking for... Um, Make sure you're looking for jobs that are LMA sponsored. So like I said before, both routes are great. Both routes have their own benefits. And these are routes that you can actually do together. There's nothing stopping you from doing an LMA, uh, looking for a job as well as doing study permits, okay? So you can do the two. No one is better um, than, than the other one, okay? Um, so we have just a few more minutes and I'm going to look and see if there's any question that I haven't answered. Someone is asking if the handbook is soft copy or hard copy. Handbook, will I do hard copy book now? It's not a book. It's a training. It's a, it's a guide. So it is soft copy. Um, it is housed on a website and you will get a login or you'll be able to log in and view it or watch it and, you know, make use of it. So it's not a, it's not a hard copy. Um, see you on the other side, Prince Emmanuel. I'm looking forward, Prince Emmanuel. We've been talking about seeing you on the other side for a while now. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing you as well on the other side. People should come to Canada now and join me. Um, come to Canada. We're looking for you. Um, I haven't answered your question, David SM. So, what is your question? Not see any question from you. Um, and a lot of these questions are questions I answered during the, a lot of questions I answered during the um, presentation. Does this route also apply to skilled construction professionals? Oh my goodness, it does. It, it applies to any, any job category and definitely skilled professional, construction professionals, it does, yeah. Yes, so I think that we have done almost um, an hour and a half and I've answered most of this question. Doing the two, would I need the two visas or one visa? I think the two what? Um, I don't know what that means. I'm so sorry. I wish I could. I would have answered this straight away. I've answered questions about proof of funds, answered questions about IELTS. So if you came late, I would advise you to actually uh, go look at the replay. You can use the same um, link to look at the replay. Take your time. Look at the replay. Uh, it answers a lot of the questions that are here. I actually dived very deep during the presentation. I answered a lot of these questions. Uh, so maybe you joined late or maybe you were not actually listening and you, you're listening and you did not take notes. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to use this opportunity to thank everyone for taking time out. I believe that the session has been very educative because a lot of you are saying it has. Um, and I actually took time to prepare for this webinar so that I can get all this information to you. So I believe you gain value. Don't forget, um, take your time. Don't take your money and just throw it at someone. I told you my story. I told you a friend, sorry, a friend. I think story of, there are so many stories of people who lost money. I understand the desperation. I understand the frustration. I understand that you want to be in Canada this year or as soon as possible, but be careful. Um, like I said, if they ask you for money, it's probably a scam. If it's too good to be true, then it probably is. Um, and then I also gave some red flags that you can look out for. It is doable. I, I, and the reason why I say this is that I know how I felt seven, eight years ago when I was trying to come to Canada. I felt hopeless. I felt like there was no way. I felt I was too old. I felt that there was no one that was going to take me. I felt that I couldn't get admission. I felt that I couldn't get a job. All the things I also fell for the scam as well, uh, because my monies were taken by one sweet fucking young man like this. I catch him, eh? Anyway, so he took my money, but I learned the lessons. And some people would rather learn from experience than listen to this. So 
uh, don't learn from your own experience. And Alabi Fulala, trust me, I didn't see your question. If I'd seen your questions, I would have answered. Uh, but if you actually go and listen again to the webinar, it was very informative. You will get the answers to all your questions. So thank you very much. I appreciate everybody. Thank you for taking your time. Don't forget to like my channel. Click the notification button. We are always posting these um, messages for you, videos that are very valuable. And don't forget that Canada is possible. Canada needs you and you can do it because I'm trusting in you. Don't forget to contact whoever sent you here. Ask them for the link to purchase. If you saw it on my own um, on my own social media, go ahead and send me a DM or send them a DM. Whoever sent you here, they'll send you the link. Don't just be here and walk away. Like I said before, I don't want you to come two weeks later, three months later, and you're still to the problem or still complaining that somebody took your 800,000, your 850, your 550, your 350, when I've told you that you don't get scammed with the information that you have here. So thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night, if it's night. And happy new month to you. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next webinar, which is likely to be sometime this month. And maybe we're talking about um, the century and especially the PNP, because that's one route where Canada is putting a lot of concentration. Don't forget that you can do the PNP, which is a provincial nominee program, because somebody just asked for this PNP. Provincial nominee program. We're going to be talking about that in the next um, in the next webinar. So I'm hoping to see you guys in Canada soon, or at least I'm hoping to hear that you are making progress. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and bye for now.